Happy Monday, everybody. I hope you had a really great weekend. I know I did. I had some um, exciting fun. I tried my hand at golfing again. Um, I told some of you last week that I tried it and it was awful. Well, this time I went golfing again and we did a little bit different. We had teams kind of, so that was a lot more fun. Plus we had golf carts. Those things are fun. Um, I was able to do a lot better. So that, that made it just all around a little bit more fun. So anyways, I am going to continue reading on. Just to recap, last time I read, um, there was a school play. And Azalea got this letter from, um, what is his face? Dr. Grassmere. And so, um, she was going to read it later. So the letter is coming up next. If you remember that big cliffhanger I left you on. Shall we get started? A report from inside. After about an hour of celebrating, taking pictures, and many people telling me I should become a professional actor, I tried to laugh politely, we headed home. The Brantleys knew I wanted to read the letter as quickly as possible, so they left me alone as I went into the living room, sat on the love seat. I don't understand why they call it that, by the way. I turned on the lamp and opened up the envelope. Dear Azalea, we hope you have been doing well in your new home. We think, you, think of you often and we miss you. We don't have very much to report in the way of news, but there is general feeling of unease around the campus. Commander Jensen is not around very much anymore, and people are wondering why. The soldiers seem to be acting differently, too. There's a lot of huddling in corners and whispering, and they seem to be less concerned with our training. It is almost as if the regular humans don't care as much about the afterlife humans as they used to. That isn't necessarily a bad thing because all that training and lecturing was a bit wearying, as you know, but at the same time, it could mean that significant changes are being planned. One unusual thing that has happened, however, Dr. Grassmere has reappeared here in this territory several times over the last few weeks. He made an announcement at dinner one night and said he is working on a few projects. Everyone is concerned because, as you may recall, he was not kind to the subjects. However, he has made a significant effort to be more benevolent this time. In fact, it was his idea to have us write you a letter which he himself promised he would deliver. If you are reading this now, that means he kept his promise, so maybe he has become friendlier after all. Well, what is... Well, that is probably enough for now. We have never written a letter to anyone before, so we have no idea how long we are they are supposed to be, but it seems we have said all what we have to say. Let us just reiterate how much we miss you and how hopeful we are that you are doing well. Your success is our success, and we are so happy for you. Your friends. Bursus and Frumpus clack nozzle. Wow. Bursus and Frumpus had been my podmates, meaning I'd live with them. I was closer to them than I was to any other afterlife humans. Hearing their voices, if only in my head, was a shock. I put the piece of paper down and closed my eyes. I tried to remember what life was like back in the territory, but it was hard. Our memories are programmed in a very particular fashion. Some things we remember very well, like all of Alice's lines in Alice in Wonderland, but other things are very foggy, like the entire past. I, can, I concentrated on extremely hard and fragments of mem of images finally appeared in my head. The wooden bench I used to lie on in my pod and the sad smile on Frumpus's face when he waved goodbye to me for the last time, but overall it was frust frustratingly vague. That What wasn't vague, however, was Burstus and Frumpus's attitude in the letter. They were scared. And I had no way to help them. I went back to the kitchen where Mr. and Mrs. Brantley were sitting on the table. Evan was in the family room watching television, which was good. I didn't really want to hear him to hear what I was about to say. Well, Mrs. Brantley said, who's it from and what did it say? It was from Bursus and Frumpus, my friends from the territory. I hesitated before going on. Is everything all right? Asked Mr. Brantley. I, I don't know, I answered. At first they were, they said that there wasn't much news to report, but then by the end of the letter, it sounded like they were scared. Mrs. Brantley frowned. About what? I don't know exactly. Mr. Brantley pushed the bowl of jelly beans in my direction and I took a handful. I guess they feel like something is about to happen. Something bad and the people in charge aren't telling them what's going on. That seems odd. Mr. Brantley said. Commander Jensen seems so committed to the assimilation program. Maybe there have been some decisions made that we don't know about. 
I'll make a call and try to find out what's going on. I would appreciate that, I told him. But there was something I didn't tell him, or Mrs. Brantley, or Evan, or anyone else that night. I had made a decision of my own. What could this decision be? Oh, I don't know. Okay. The first sweat. I know you have heard about zombie sweats, so I will spare you the terribly embarrassing details about what it looks like, slimy, what color it is, yellow, and what it smells like, rotten eggs times a thousand, and what happens when a regular human sees it, they get very upset. But what I will tell you is that the next day in gym, I sweated in front of humans for the first time. Yuck. I know it sounds difficult to believe, right? How could I have not sweated when I was about to perform the role of Alice in Wonderland? In front of the entire school, with Dr. Grassmere staring at me from the third row. And then on top of that, I forgot my lines, but for some reason, I didn't sweat. Remember? Zombies only sweat when we're nervous. So, maybe I wasn't nervous. Maybe I was way past nervous that night and had gone straight to terrified. In any event, I didn't sweat that night. But in gym class, while looking at Eric Dasher, who was a very nice human boy, and after having heard the whole having heard the words he'd spoken would you consider sitting next to me at the graduation ceremony next month i felt my sneakers starting to get a little squishy bloop bloop squish squish you can see the zombie um sweat coming out Ugh. like chunky almost that's disgusting i started backing up slowly trying to ease my way out of the odor range i, I i'm terribly sorry but 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 what did you say but Eric, unfortunately, was stepping toward me as fast as I stepped away from him. I, I was just thinking you seem really nice and maybe it would be cool if we could hang out at graduation, you know, by sitting together and hanging out and stuff. Ooh, he likes her. At least I think so. Oh, well, that certainly is a nice offer and I, I will consider it. Eric laughed. Do you have to be so formal about it? Then he suddenly stopped talking. I was quite sure I knew why. Uh, hey, hey, do you smell that? Uh, smell what? He wrinkled his nose. I, I don't know. Uh, that. It's, I mean, whoa, it's really gross. Oh. I'm not sure what you're referring to, I said, which was the exact moment I discovered that afterlife humans could lie. Living among regular humans had made me realize that sometimes the truth was a very difficult thing to say. In the meantime, other kids started picking up the scent. What is that? Someone said, while various moans and groans were heard throughout the gymnasium. But then Ras Klepsaw came running over and put an end to the mystery. I know exactly what that is. He thrust his finger down the direction of my sneakers. Look, zombie sweat. I recognize that stink anywhere. I looked sadly at Ross, wondering what had happened to the boy who'd convinced every kid in the school to cut their hair off. The smell of zombie sweat put an end to all that, I guess. A collective EW rang in my ears from essentially the entire gym class. Arnold tried to help me out. Guys, remember when I got the zombie sweats? It happens. I'll take Azalea to the nurse's office and we'll get her cleaned up. Please don't make her feel bad. As Arnold and I walked out of the gym, I heard two boys I didn't know whispering to each other. What did people expect? Said one of the boys. These zombies can never fit in. I mean, come on, we've all seen the movies. They're more like monsters than people. The other boy laughed. Totally, but there was nothing in zombie movies about that incredibly stinky sweat. I mean, that's even scarier than eating brains and stuff. They both laughed. Shut up, you guys, said Arnold while I pretended I didn't hear them. I was too busy glancing back at Eric Dasher. He was he was talking to one of his friends, pointing at his feet and laughing. I was pretty sure he was making fun of me too. I guess the whole sitting next to each other as graduation at graduation thing was off. Word gets out. When we got to her office, Nurse Raposa was attending a attending to a child whose poison ivy was whose poison ivy rash was acting up. My two favorite afterlives, she cried. Which was funny, since I'm pretty sure we were the only two afterlives she knew. What can I do for you guys? I was still too embarrassed to say anything, so Arnold spoke up. 
Azalea had a small incident. She excreted some zombie sweat in Jim, and let's just say it pretty much brought things to a grinding halt. Nurse Raposo nodded and looked at me with a gentle smile. Well, let's see what we can do about that. Would you mind taking your shoes off, dear? Actually, I did mind. Taking my shoes off meant exposing everyone to more zombie sweat, which was probably caked in my socks. I wasn't sure how anything would help. Don't you worry about a thing, she added. Even though she clearly knew I was worried about many things. I've seen way worse. I did as I was told and removed my shoes. The nurse immediately took them and placed them in the stink in the sink and ran hot water over them. I took my socks off and she threw them in a trash can with a lid. Then she went into the closet, retrieved a brand new pair of socks and a pair of sandals, and offered them to me. These should get you through the rest of the day. I looked at her for a second. Can I lie down for a minute? Sure. She patted one of those two cots that were in her office. Please avail yourself to one of my comfy, cozy master bedroom suites. She was making a joke, of course, but I didn't have the energy to laugh. I laid down on the cot and considered everything that had happened to me since I tried to fit into the real zombie world, or into the real world as a zombie. I zombie zinged a complete stranger. I zombie sweated a class a classmate. I performed in a school play, but not before I had full-blown panic attack. I got a letter from my podmates in the territory saying they felt like something bad was about to happen. I heard students talking to me like I was from some sort of monster. Nurse Raposo interrupted my train of thought. Are, are you comfortable, Azalea? Would you like some water? She pulled up a chair and smiled kindly. When, when do you think you'll be ready to return to class? I tried to smile back, but I couldn't, so instead I just closed my eyes. I didn't have the heart to tell her what my real answers were. Am I comfortable? No. When will I feel ready to return to class? Never. Let's see here. Okay, I'm going to finish this part. Ready or not, I went back to class about 20 minutes later, but pretty much kept to my self straight through lunch. Then, at recess, when everyone headed over to the fields to play games or the jungle gym to climb around... I went and sat by myself on a bench. I didn't feel much like playing or climbing, but I wasn't by myself for long because five minutes later, Sarah Ann came over to join me. What are you doing on my bench? She asked. I shrugged. Not much, I guess. Okay, do you mind if I sit here too? Of course not. Great. She opened up her book. What are you reading? I asked her. She showed me the cover. Animal Poems, 1800 to 2000. Wow, that sounds cool. It is, she said. I let her read in peace for about five minutes, and then I heard myself say, I I'm going back to the territory. She looked at me, which was unusual, since she rarely looked directly at anybody. What do you mean? I mean, I don't think I should stay here anymore. I don't think I belong here, so I'm going to go back to where I belong. Sarah Ann put her book down, grabbed her letter board, and then got up and ran off. I wondered what she was doing until I saw her approach Arnold, Evan, Ross, and Kiki, pointed at her letter board, and pointed over at me. They all started running in my direction. I guess there was no turning back now. Kiki was the reach, first to reach me. What is going on? She demanded. You're talking about going back to the territory? For real? Is this because of the zombie sweat? Ross added. I mean, yeah, that stuff is gross. Everyone knows that. But so what? I mean, it's not worth giving up on this whole thing, you know? I wasn't sure what to say to them, so I didn't say anything. By then, Arnold and Evan, the two slowest of their bunch, had finally reached the bench, too. Evan was a little out of breath, but Arnold said, We need to talk about this, please? I'm not sure we do. Arnold, you are doing great here and that's wonderful, but that doesn't mean that's right for everyone. And I've decided it's not right for me. Why? Asked Ross. Why would you want to go back there? Isn't it like basically jail? I wasn't really sure how to answer that. I know it seems like that, but it's really the only home I've ever known. And in a way, being out here, I held my arms out to indicate the world in general. Being out here is like jail to me because I don't feel free. I feel like I'm being watched all the time and I have to act in a certain way and there's a lot of pressure on me and, and I just don't think I can handle it for very much longer. I hesitated for a second. And also I heard from my podmates Burstus and Frumpus 
they wrote me that something is different and Commander Jensen isn't there very much and it feels like big changes are about to happen and, and they're scared and it made me want to go be with them. Kiki sat down next to me on the bench. This is crazy, she said. You're going to leave now, right before we graduate? What if my parents and I go meet with Commander Jensen to find out what's really going on? Arnold said. Would that help? I don't know, I said. I didn't seem like he was involved. It didn't seem like he was involved much anymore. We'll find out, Arnold insisted. I'll have my parents arrange a visit. Finally, Evan had regained his breath and was ready to talk. I have something to say, he said. Everyone stopped chattering. I have my last chemotherapy treatment next week, he said. And I was planning on having a party to celebrate that in our graduation. Azalea, I would like very much for you to agree to at least stay until then, please? All eyes were on me. I, I, I don't know. I, I really appreciate how nice you're all being to me. I, I promise to think about that. Sarah Ann, who had been quiet with, while everyone else was chattering, took out her letter board. Then it's settled. She's staying, at least for now, she said. And that is the end of that part. The next part is Arnold, but I am going to stop there for now. And I will be back tomorrow to read you more. Have a good night, guys. Bye.